I don't know, you know, your home pl puts a, a whole world of um, wonder and complication on you, especially when it's a place like Mississippi, I think. As far as a place in a poem in general, um, I mean, a poem is a place in my mind. And so, um, and uh, in that sense, it's, it's its own landscape. It may happen to have an ostensible focus other than that, say, Wheeling, West Virginia or, uh, you know, Montana or somewhere. And, um, I don't know, maybe it's a, a particular thing we inherited from the Romantics, or maybe it's British Romanticism on American soil. I think it's very much bound up in identity and, um, and in this idea of um, finding uh, oneself in the process of finding a particular place. This process of constant redefinition that uh, is uh, largely involved with, if not dependent upon, naming the place. Naming the moment. As if moments had names like cities do. And making them stand out and putting them on the map that way. Individual moments. So, yeah, you gotta, you gotta have a place where you have anything else, I reckon. <laughs>favorite guitar that's really interesting I think I'd go with Willie Brown's resonator uh, that thing has got some real ghost in it and man oof. Huh. talk about mojo I mean just to be in the same room with that guitar um, his uh, he's not you know the most well-known of the Delta Blues men even though he played a lot with Robert Johnson and of course, Robert Johnson calls him out, you know, on one song. My boy Willie Brown, he says. Um, but yeah, he played a he played a six string resonator. I believe it was a national. Um, and uh, and you know, when you think of a resonator, you think of a kind of kind of brusque, metallic, haunting sound. But I mean, he could play that thing. As, I mean, every bit as a uh, deftly as uh, you know, as if he were playing a, a classical guitar, you know, and his compositions um, just absolutely blow me away. Um, such a unique mind and uh, musical voice, you know, uh, on, on the guitar. So yeah, it'd probably be that one. Um, I don't know if I'd actually play it, you know, I might kind of sneak up on it every once in a while and try to look at it without it looking at me. How do I stay focused and make time for writing? Well, um, you know, uh, you do the best you can. Uh, sometimes, you know, a lot of times when, when the kids are at school, um, if I'm not teaching, you know, I'll be here, I'll be here writing. Um, sometimes after they go to sleep, writing. Sometimes before they wake up, writing. Um, it's a little bit different in that I don't often get as many long blocks of time as I might have in the past, but at the same time, I'm much more aware and frugal with, with my time. So I find that um, my perception, my attitude toward the time that I have has changed such that I feel like I'm actually getting more done. Um, but I think that also just has to do with the sort of, I mean, listen, I, I don't want to be too rosy about it. Children, you know, it takes a lot of energy, but they give back a lot of energy too. You know, it's all this creativity and wonder and energy. I mean, just gobs of energy, you know. <coughs> so, I don't know how we do it. It works out. <laughs> <laughs>